Hey everyone, it is Gabrielle over here today at number 14 at Persimmon Ridge. Now you guys, Oxmoor Toyota is sponsoring the whole in one. So we have this beautiful 2020 Toyota Camry. So good luck everyone, beautiful vehicle. All right, now I have Abby Drain here with me. She is the president and CEO of Bellwood and Brooklawn. And Abby, I've got a couple questions for you. So tell us a little bit about today's events and how is it going to be helping with Bellwood and Brooklawn? Yeah, thank, well, thanks for having us. Yeah. And, uh, the, the event today is a, is a golf scramble and people in Louisville and around here are used to golf scrambles. And this is one of the ways that we use to raise money to take care of the kids. Right. Um, our kids uh, ha have uh, many needs. We've got about 150 kids on campuses. Okay. And, and they have needs for clothing uh, personal hygiene products, okay. uh, if, if they happen to go to a movie or, you know, have some kind of entertainment. Of course, we're all, we're all isolated on our campuses right now, right. so we've had to buy Chromebooks okay. for our kids to learn, and they, they need school supplies just like anyone else. So all the same needs that you have for a kid that was in between the age of 6 and 18, okay. we have 150 of those needs, and that's what right. we use this money for and we couldn't, we couldn't really do our job without it, and the kids couldn't have the things they need without it. Well, perfect. Well, I'm glad we could help you, you know, a little bit with that. That's awesome. All right, now what are some of the milestones in the past few years um, for Bellwood and Brooklawn? Wow, we, we, it seems like it really goes fast, and we're kind of at a halt here with the COVID. Right. But what we've been doing is doing some research work on our kids to, to research how well the, the uh, behavioral program is inside our campus. So each okay. one of these uh, residential placements have a different kind of model of a program that they use for behaviors because that's why the kids are here, to learn new behaviors and to learn how to sit down right. at a table, um, to have a conversation and right. look someone in the eye and to really just get along sometimes mm -hmm. because they have had so much trauma and abuse, sometimes they don't know what's safe or not. So we teach them how to be safe again. So what we're doing is doing research on that to see how long our kids are then stabilized mm -hmm. back in the community. So what's really important, you can you can do well inside our campus right. and then fail when you go home. Now, that's not, that's cost a lot of money, right. it's traumatized a lot of kids and families, taking them away from their families. But if we, the better we do that work, we use that research to come back in and tweak our program mm -hmm. so that kids then when they go home can stay there longer, right. uh, can be more stabilized, go back into a regular school environment. So right. we're really proud of that. We've, we've spent a few years working on that. Well, yeah, I'd say so. Well, awesome. All right. And what are some of the initiatives that the initiatives that you have left for the remainder of the year? Yeah. Well, th this has been a hard year on all of us. We all know that it's it's affected our economy, it's affected our relationships, it's affected home life. And so our kids are very much impacted. They've been kept from their parents. They've been isolated on our campuses. Okay. We've used some social media. We've used uh, again our our um, um, technology and Zoom mm -hmm. and telephone, uh, that's still not good enough for these kids. So we're trying to get through this, keep the kids as contacted as possible, okay. uh, really help them understand the racial unrest and the COVID unrest that's going on and make sure that they're not re-traumatized by that. Just as a parent would at home while mm -hmm. you work with your teenagers and your young children, explaining to them what this is and how we'll get through it and how we'll get through it together and helping them trust us to keep them safe by us keeping ourselves safe mm -hmm. and wearing right. our mask and staying social distance right. uh, and not, you know, we don't go on vacations, get out in crowds. Mm -hmm. uh, we're, we're trying to do the best to keep ourselves safe so we keep the kids safe. So right. that's really what we need to do this year. Right. Uh, a, a lot of our funding's been impacted by this because this has impacted the economy and, and people have lost their jobs and, mm -hmm. and uh, lots of businesses are shutting down. So those same people that would have provided us donations in the past right. are, are not able to do that. So we're having to go to uh, more people, but fewer people and those people are having to give more and we really appreciate right. that. Yeah. Now, lastly, how, if people do want to get involved in this, I mean, what are things that are really going to help you guys out? Yeah, well, funding right now. Mm -hmm. um, if you don't have funding, we have kids with birthdays uh, uh, every other day. If you say 100 and, 150 kids and, the, and the, it moves to about 400 
during the whole year because mm -hmm. some do get to leave and go back home. But we have every holiday, uh, Christmases, we, we, need, we need birthday presents. And you okay. think of girls and boys, age six to 18, mm -hmm. um, those are the kind of things we need. Again, if you, can, if you could just drop off hygiene products or, or um, toilet paper or paper towels or buy the kids a meal. We just collected, mm -hmm. our executive team just collected an amount of money and we're gonna buy pizza for both campuses for the mm -hmm. staff and kids. So that's a small amount of money. We got a group together, right. like $400 bought pizza. Right. And awesome. you can get a group together and, and donate something like that. Then, the, then both the staff and the kids feel some appreciation and some love and they know people out there care about them because again, they're they're isolated and, right. and we're really kept down because our campus is kind of like a nursing home. Once that right. starts spreading, it's, you know, yeah. it spreads really fast and, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, it's health concerns. So right. those are the ways you could help. Get on our website okay. and we have a list of what's needed. We need school supplies, we need backpacks, we need Chromebooks, uh, anything that you know of other young kids needing that are school aged. I mean, we have to continue the education of these 150 kids. So mm -hmm. you may have a couple of kids in your home, three or four, and you're working on keeping them educated. We have 150. Right. And these kids are really behind mm -hmm. in, in school. So it, it's double work to try to catch them up, keep them focused right. w with their behavioral health issues, and keep them on track and connected with their parents. Uh, our staff are unbelievable. Um, my heart goes out to them. If you, know, if you don't have funds or you don't have those things, prayers work. We're, we're a big believer in prayers around here and uh, we appreciate all the prayers we've already gotten and all the support we've already gotten. And if we could just continue that okay. and be together, we'll get out of this. Okay, we definitely will. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Now, you guys, I will have a link to where um, you guys can see exactly what they need and the donating processes and things like that. Thank you so much for watching this. And we have something else coming up too. So stay tuned. All right, so this is Kenny Alward from Oxmoor, PGA member as well. Coming back to my roots, talking to Steve Schaefer, Director of Golf here at Persimmon Ridge. Uh, so you're out here on a Monday, it's your day off. PGA does a lot of charitable work. So what's it like for you to be able to donate some of your time and have your facility to help raise money for these kids? Yeah, it's great. You know, we do a number of different outings on right. Mondays and most of them are for charitable organizations, raising money for uh, great causes. So we're excited to be a part of that. It's really great as a PGA golf professional to know that the game of golf can touch people's lives in so many right. different ways. It does, it does. And this is one of the few things that people can get out and do right now and be safe. I noticed on the carts, you've even got dividers, right? To make sure everybody's safe on that. I guess, is that with the gover governor's uh, rules? So we're following CDC guidelines. Okay. And you know, if you can't be six feet apart, you gotta have some kind of barrier or, you know, obviously we're asking people to wear masks indoors. Right. So uh, yeah, it's been an interesting year. A lot of different things thrown our way. Seems like it's something different every week, but we're just rolling with the punches and excited that folks can still get out and enjoy the game of golf and that, that it's something that they can come out and do safely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, the reason we're standing here next to this camera and the reason we're here is we've got this for the hole in one. So yeah. I threw the drone up a little while ago and took a look at the hole. I mean, I played this hole a number of times, but you're the pro here, pro. So yeah. give me the pro tip. Yeah. How are they gonna make this one today to get this Camry? Well, you know, uh, the green is really down in a nice little bowl for okay. the most part um, and, and a pretty good slope off the right. So. Uh, generally speaking, you want something coming in from the right side because it's going to kick and break a little left. So if you're looking to, to drop it in the hole, um, you want to sling it in there a little right to left. Good pro tip. Good pro tip right there. <laughs> Play the odds. And if you do hit it to the right, you meant to do it anyway, right? You didn't oh, want to hit right. it. That's yeah. right. Of yeah. course. It was a wind. Well, right? You can bank it off the hill. You know? <laughs> call the bank. We're playing soft. <laughs> uh, lastly, what's going on out here at Persimmon Ridge this year? So it's a different year. When we, we came in, we saw the kids out there. There's a little junior clinic going on this morning about 8.30 or 9 o'clock. What's going on here? Yeah, so uh, Persimmon Ridge and Polo Fields were actually two clubs in one. My former place. Got a vi vibrant, <laughs> uh, really vibrant club. A lot of great members yeah, out here enjoying awesome. golf. It's been an extremely busy year since it's the one thing people can do. Yeah. Um, and down at the other end of the practice tee here at Persimmon Ridge is the Golf Academy. Okay. Um, and they've got a very vibrant uh, business, do a lot of clinics and camps, and a lot of junior golfers come through here. So. Okay. Um, yeah, it's just a very active, vibrant place, and I'll throw a pitch out that uh, we're excited next year since it's Kentucky Open Week this week. Right. Um, next year, we're going to be the host of the, of the Kentucky Open here in, in Kentucky, so we're very excited about that. I had not seen that news yet on the PGA yeah. newsletter, so congratulations on that. Yeah. Thanks for all the work that you do with kids and growing the game of golf here in the charity. I know your wife does as well, so there's yeah. a part of your family and has been for a long time. So. Yeah. 
right. hope you got some tips here on 14. If you need more tips about how to play Persimmon Ridge, you know where to find this guy's director of instruction. <laughs> Thanks so much. All right.